Oh, what? The flag? What are they? Flag there? No. Can you get a flag on your phone? Call your chief. Where you got a stolen flag on your? It's bizarre. Yeah, where are they? I noticed that. Before. Well, can we just make believe there's a flag there? Yes. Sure. You can also argue that all. I know. I believe there's a flag. Obviously, that's just fake. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
At the end of September, we re received our report from Morgan Stanley, the town's investment manager, for the performance of the two pension plants, the town and the fire. The town pension plan is down minus 4.73% fiscal year to date versus its benchmark of minus 4.75%. Over the three-year horizon, the town plan has returned 2.57% versus its benchmark of 2.32%. And the fire department pension plan is down minus 4.68% fiscal year to date and has returned 2.60% over the three-year horizon versus its benchmark of 2.32%. Do I say something? Mm -hmm. I know. Overall, the treasurer's responsibility is to oversee all monies belonging to the town. And as of September 30, 2022, total cash balances were 34.7 million. Total pension balances were 22.8 million for total assets under management of 57.5 million. So page two of the treasurer's report show the revenues broken out in more detail. Tax revenues were $239,690 for the month, bringing the fiscal year to date total to $26,718,979 or 57% of the amount budgeted for fiscal year 23. In terms of local revenues, the town collected 174,000 751 with recording fees and building permits taking the lead in a quiet month of September. Overall, for the month of September, the town collected 559,338 in local revenue or 56.7% of our fiscal year 23 budget. Anybody have any questions? Or what's anything? Who's paying a 4%? So our 4% is our is our Who's paying 4%? Yeah. We're almost getting 4% in our three month ladder bonds. We're not quite getting 4%. So we're ladder bonds, you're calling? Well, we're, we're in treasury bonds. So we're in that three months. We're, ladder, we're laddering them. So basically, we just purchased new bond. So they're for three months. And then our, we on October 31, another, another ARPA bond and another town cash bond comes due. Yeah. And I'm sure rates again will be good and we'll buy another bond. So they ladder, they keep each, the end of each month, they become dip. They mature so we catch a higher interest rate. So, so they mature every month? Well, we yes, have right a, now. Nine month, a three month one. So you might have three month bonds. You might have three sets of them. So, oh, so you got one expired and you got three months. Right. You keep catching higher interest rate. Right. So that's why they call them a ladder. So you're talking about multiple bonds. Not exactly like that. Right now, we are only having two that are maturing each time ARPA and town cash. Right. At the moment. Leah, do you want to comment? Um, so when when you set up a what we call a laddered portfolio, just so everyone understands, initially when we started doing this, um, I think it was in June, May or June or whatever, uh, we took maturities that were three months and then another bond matured in month four, month five, month six, et cetera. And now we're getting to the point where those bonds that we initially purchased are starting to mature. So as they mature, we roll them out to the end of the ladder, so three months, six months out, or as our with our investment advisors, if they give us advice that maybe three months is the sweet spot on the short term term curve, we would put the money there. So uh, what we're trying to do is just uh, keep something coming due um, every month, if possible, so that as the interest rate, especially with you know the Fed funds rate jumping up 75, 50 basis points, um, or not 75, but 50 basis points every time, uh, we want to make sure that we're there to catch the higher rates and not go out too long. So with a laddered rate, with a laddered bond maturity, we're able to do that. Right so, now, we're just taking advantage of these higher rates that are short term. And getting higher. So, um, you know, there was an article, I, I sent Leanne and Barbara an article. I get a, um, every day in my email box, uh, something called Governing Daily. And it's usually about five articles from all over the country. It could be St. Louis. They're just articles written 
sometimes on a national topic, but frequently on a local topic. You know, St. Louis mass transit is back to pre-COVID letter, you know, something like that. But there was an article about why did so many towns go out seeking higher returns when interest rates were near zero and the only place you could get any return was on the long end of the of, of the uh, treasuries and they went out 300 600 days and now they're locked in and they're not and they're at like 0 0.05 or you know 0 0.07 and we're getting four percent and even CalPERS, I think in the article they mentioned CalPERS, which is the largest pension fund in the country. I think CalPERS did, yeah. but there were a lot of municipalities that did it. It was, I mean, obviously a colossal mistake trying to maximize return when everybody was kind of saying interest rates got to go up at some point, right? And they did. Uh, and it was an article just saying, like, who, who's managing these funds? Who's making these calls? It was just an interesting article given what we're doing, but we're not special. I'm not saying we're special. I'm just saying it's the right thing to do, obviously. I'm sure most, if not every town in Connecticut, is doing something similar, maybe. So, anyway, that's it. We have a separate advisor for the bond purchase than we do. For our regular financial uh, investment, yes. No. Oh well, no, <laughs> same job, same company, same company, but it's a totally different person. Yeah. David is our uh, David. David is the bottom man. Right, it's a different yes. person within Morgan. But it's Morgan Stanley. Yes. So I don't know what you meant. If you meant that's exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah. <laughs> and we did correct timing, so that sounds good. Congratulations, to you. So hopefully you heard. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, and the, yeah. I only meant the two ladies. Oh, yeah. 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 So, for our um, uh, 401A plan, which is the town defined contribution plan, which has been in effect since 2017, mm -hmm. and then the other, the 457, which is a deferred comp plan that you can contribute to town employees. Uh, we were using a company uh, called ICMA RC, which is, they're pretty big in the municipal space, uh, but we did an RFP and we interviewed them, Morgan Stanley. I don't know if we interviewed anybody else. Morgan Stanley was already managing our DB plan and fire plan. Uh, and ICMARC has proprietary funds, and we, you know, they had not like with Morgan Stanley, you can buy John Hancock, you can buy ICMR, ICMARC had most of their funds were proprietary ICMARC funds. So we were, uh, we loved what we saw. We actually did a little bit better on the fee from Morgan Stanley, and we liked the universe of funds that were being offered our employees a lot better too. So we went from having two financial advisors on two different plans. Now everything is under one roof with Morgan Stanley. FYI. Is that clear? Sure. One more question. Sure. And the $106,984 in interest. Mm -hmm. uh, refresh my memory. You said that goes into the general funds or where does that go then? No, it's actually under uh, local revenues, under the treasurer's uh, interest income. Okay. Which we are, we, we used to really be struggling. I think last year we were at 25,000 or 35, or the year before, very low. And now obviously we're seeing better returns on that. So, so at the end, you're, you're at a surplus. A lot of that, part of it could be. Well, yes, absolutely. Yes, because it's budgeted. I think seventy-five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, 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 we're definitely going to be earning more than that. It'll be part of a general government surplus. Absolutely. Good job. Thank you. I'm not looking for accolades. I'm just looking to make sure you understand exactly what we're doing. That's all. Not only for myself, but everybody else in the room, or those people that are home. Yeah. I ask the question sometimes. Yeah, you should. I love to ask them. I do because it's important. 
Are there any other questions for the treasurer? Okay, there are none. Thank you. Thank you. We will move on to the finance director. Okay, good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, does everyone have their finance director report in front of them? Because I will be referring to it. Um, so we're talking about September 30. So we've just completed our first quarter of fiscal year 23, and uh, everything is going well as and as expected. Um, through the first quarter, in terms of our expenditures, uh, the town and the, the town-wide government has spent $14.8 million or 30% of our budget. So that's about uh, one third of the year. Uh, that's where just about where we should be. So that's looking good. In terms of things that have changed since the last time we met on um, the 28th of September, we had a, a, a town meeting. There was a lot of business that took place at that town meeting. And one of the things that was approved was a transfer of the $312,000 from the debt service review reserve to the pension reserve that was approved by the board of finance and uh, moved to town meeting. So that did go through and we have done that transaction. Uh, also at the town meeting, uh, we took care of a lot of business that related to the year end surplus for fiscal year 22. And um, at that town meeting, everything that the board of finance approved was, was um, also approved at the town meeting. So therefore we have officially uh, we have an official soft close to fiscal year 22. Our auditors are going to come in and do their site work um, in a couple of weeks in um, November. And, um, and shortly thereafter, we will be closing fiscal year 22. Um, also in this report at the last Board of Finance meeting held earlier this month, um, it was voted to um, approve a $500,000 match to the community challenge grant that was approved board of finance. So that will be on the slate uh, for the next town meeting as well as um, when we hear whether or not that has been approved. So it was uh, um, um, preliminarily approved. Um, also a $347,000 steep grant was approved last month and that it also is awaiting town meeting. If you turn to page two of the finance director's report uh, in terms of cash flow, um, for the month of September, the town utilized $3.4 million worth of its cash balances. Uh, 2.9 of that was due to uh, general fund. As the treasurer just, just noted, uh, we received um, just under $600,000 worth of revenues and we had uh, three and a half uh, million dollars worth of expenses. So that um, accounts for the change in the uh, cash flow in terms of general fund. For our capital accounts um, that we had there, we went down $75,000. Um, in that account, the major movers, we uh, spent $50,000 on the sidewalks. And then we also spent $20,000 on, on the high school lights, some of the um, final bills for, for getting that up and running. In terms of our reserves, uh, we uh, spent um, $106,000 during September. That had to do with the fire department's um, debt service payment for the, to, for the fire trucks that we have uh, recently purchased. So um, that was the only thing that happened in our reserve accounts. And for our non-major funds, those uh, were down for the month of September, $413,000. The major movers in those accounts include um, the Board of Education spent $100,000, the Youth and Family Budget uh, spent $30,000, uh, we spent $160,000 paying our uh, town and fire pensioners their payroll, and um, also we had $75,000 transfer, uh, we collect uh, credit card balances um, in an off-budget account that are associated with park and rec, and then we transfer them to be included in the general fund. So uh, that cap transfer was also uh, captured. In terms of moving down, in terms of our capital outlays, which occur on page, pages two and three of the finance director's report, um, as I mentioned before, with the uh, year-end surplus uh, items that were approved at the town meeting that strengthened significantly our capital reserves. We now have um, $3.4 million in reserves 
and $2.7 million of that are in our municipal uh, municipal reserve funds, which includes capital non-recurring, the um, fire apparatus, uh, public works, as well as the Board of Ed. So those total $2.7 million. And at that meeting, um, I think it was 374,000 was approved to be moved into capital non-recurring. So, so that uh, brought that balance up to 1.2 million. And we also um, increased the public works uh, uh, balance by $200,000 that was moved into the um, public works uh, municipal reserve fund. Um, all the other capital uh, funds that are listed on that page, there was not any activities uh, during, during the month of September. So those have, have remained stable. And moving on down um, to capital expenditures for the th first three months of uh, the fiscal year, we have spent so far 241,000 or 36% of um, the capital expenditures that are within the general fund budgets. And then finally, at the bottom of, of that report is the pension plans. And just want to note that the reserve has been moved into the pension plans. You can see it on the bottom line there. 312,000 now available to be utilized towards any uh, shortfalls that we may need to make up our, um, a, 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 um, our actuarial uh, determined calculation ADC. And so that's, that's it for um, the finance director's report. I did wanna make two other comments. Uh, one is that our a WPCA lockbox is gonna be operational. Um, as you may recall, we moved our tax collection lockbox uh, efforts to Webster Bank uh, last year, and that's been very successful. Uh, taxes are collected in July and, and January, as you know. Uh, for WPCA, our benefit assessments are collected in November and May. So the bills are going to be going out um, um, very, very soon, within the next week or so, I, I believe. And... Um, and we expect that that's not gonna have any uh, significant problems either. The implementation went well. So um, WPCA lockbox is going to be up and running soon. Um, and then second, the second comment I wanted to make is that uh, the first pass of budget for fiscal year 24 has uh, been delivered to all of our department heads. So at this point we are um, up and running and starting to pull together our, our budgets uh, for the upcoming budget season. So it's it's been busy um, with, between the auditors and budgeting and and um, and all. But I'll stop at that point, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Leanne, yeah, you had um, mentioned back in the cash flow summary under the capital funds that part of the expenditure out of the month uh, was twenty thousand dollars for the lights uh, at the uh, ball field. Is that out of the uh, donated money that that we had? So the the there was uh, donated money, yes, that is in, included as part of the uh, fund that made up what we call the high school lights fund. And in addition to that, we made donate um, not donations, but we made appropriations from the town that also added to that um, amount. So it was a cumulative amount that we had in that account. Um, we didn't spend donated funds and then town funds. We pulled them all together and then we paid for the entire bills out of that fund. I'm not expecting it to be off the top of your head, but at some point, could you just send me a uh, copy of the, the amount of um, town funds and the amount of donated funds that went into the account? Well, the amount of town yeah. funds was 200,000 flat. Nothing else said. No. There's a there's, there's a big in you get it, correct? That's correct. Right. And that includes the money that the police department put in. Uh that was donated funds. So the, from it does no, it that does not include that. So the town funds from the town surplus was two hundred thousand. Understand that. Oh, okay. And yet there's also twenty thousand or some amount that came out of the police department. Not out of their budget, though. I, I understand that. Yeah, but so that was part of the donated funds, which exceeded two hundred thousand. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, Bruce, if you're going to be able to see. Um, I think your question is, how much did the police department uh, raise on behalf of the no. high school lights? How much did no. other? No. Um, I, I was looking just for an accounting of, of okay, donated. sure. 
and it will all come, it will be donated funds. So, okay. Isn't that on the website, on the lighting website that um, Scott has? Yes. He had all the donors on there. Right. But you're looking for an accounting of what went out yeah. too. Right. Yeah. That's easy. We have it. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Thank you. When will the community is challenged very to the town meeting? Are we waiting? It, it will not until we get it. the grounds. Yes. Um, I would imagine with that, if we are in the running, we'll hear in November, like they'll reach out to us. Is I would imagine to say, look, you know, if we do this, are you guys ready for this? You know, are you going to be able to pull it off? Sounds great. How real is it on your end? So, uh, I don't think it's just going to be announced and they won't have given us any notice. These are big grants. And I, I would imagine that they're going to be very cautious how they uh, make sure that the project, because they're released with great fanfare, so they're going to want to see that it's going to happen. So we'll, we'll officially know in December, but I mean, I think I will know internally before that. The day the taxes pay back up on gasoline. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions for the finance director? <laughs> okay. Very no. Thank you, Hernan. Thank you, Leanne. Okay. Um, we'll move on to the gazebo electric. Yeah. Um, so. Cement's being poured tomorrow, just so you know, uh, out there. Uh, Larry Hayden's on too, yeah. So uh, I know Larry has a request on here uh, also for something entirely different. But so as we were building out the gazebo, we've had uh, Ray Allen, multitude of people kind of come to me and say, what other needs do we have in case we you know, we, and we did not quote it out before the gazebo. Uh, you know, could we, I suppose, have done the work way back then? Yes, I don't think we we're thinking of it like this yet. But what's happened is we're talking about making sure that if someone wants to do a PowerPoint out there or have a movie out there or uh, for the bands to uh, have better circuitry out there so that they don't blow a fuse and uh, the Coast Guard, and, and then it's expanded a little bit too. The Coast Guard band made a complaint to Park and Rec. When they play out here, they don't have enough juice. They don't have enough, enough electricity. So we're talking about putting in a lot more circuits so that there's a lot more ability for people to not uh, overuse the power. Um, in addition to that, there are some technical aspects to it that uh, Park and Rec and Sal Asso, the electrician, went to Larry Hayden and said, you know, what should we put in there that is going to allow people to use it like a room if they want to? Um, and um, so in talking to the electrician, he's estimating about $20,000 worth of work. And it is, Larry's gonna do a lot of the digging um, and the conduit laying and things like that. But if we wanna make this kind of, and it's, it was probably a couple months to get to this point to figure out exactly what we want and need so that we don't have to do it again in 20 years or in, in five years or in 10 years, uh, other than maybe a hardware upgrade or a software upgrade, um, I said, you know, let's come back and try to get this done and get it done right once. And so uh, I don't love to be back here on this project, but uh, it's a bit of a different project than the gazebo itself. It's actually putting in, even some additional lights. So as you go around to the basketball courts, it gets very dark. So we're gonna add two bollards there. So it's kind of just doing probably what we should be doing 
here on the town green in terms of having more circuits, more lighting, and the ability to power up whatever we need to power up and whatever we need to uh, display. And that's all I questions. Yes. Where does that I where you can fly? Go ahead. I well, mean, I hope I can answer it. Where are we going to tap into for the power? How so we're going to have a new electric box over by the fire department on town land. So there's already power over there. Right. That's what I'm Yes. So we're going to, because the gazebo is moving more towards the center of the town green, we're going to, that electric box that's there is going to be kind of an orphan. So we're going to kind of move it out of the way more towards the parking lot on, still on town, the limits of town hall 302 Main Street. But over there. Um, yeah, uh, if you do that, I would suggest putting bollards in front of that because that's where they usually push all the snow. Just so sure. you yep. that in the yep. Good point. Yep. I would highly recommend mm -hmm. throwing in a couple of extra um, PVC pipes anyway for the future. Yeah. Because it's easier to throw it through yeah. after the always, pipe. Always put, always put more put extra. Always put more time to it than you. Yeah. yeah. Carl, um, <clears throat> as we know, sometimes the lights are still on at 12 and 1 o'clock in the morning for the basketball court. <clears throat> so the gazebo, are they? Are they? I'm not awake with that. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Yep. And, uh, um, mm -hmm. So the control will be inside the town hall, correct? <clears throat> or the lights, the well, Wi Fi, and any kind of PowerPoint presentation. So we're not well, the, power will, on. the power will be there for that 100% of the time the power will be the power will be there so there shouldn't have to be any quote unquote switch for people to put on so yeah the power and the the uh the uh gigabytes so to speak will be available even at 12 o'clock yeah Oh yeah, one in the morning. Yes, I mean I don't think we, we we can't just turn that off. No, you could. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Are know. you asking the question of will the lights be on? Because well, isn't that a different question? Will the lights be uncontrolled so that people can just turn the lights on when they want to, such as the basketball courts? So there's not going to be a lot of lighting. There's going to be one center light in the gazebo. Okay, that will be on a timer. We can make sure that that is not on. Yes. And then whether the Wi-Fi can be misused, and whether or not um, how can how can Wi-Fi be misused, depending on who's using it and for what reason. You know, it comes back to the to the town hall. You know, I think it will bring Wi-Fi in the gazebo. Well, no, Larry, we're not playing wi It's not Wi-Fi. We we are we do want to have Wi-Fi in the town green. So we're just making it so that if someone wanted to do a presentation in the gazebo, they could do it. Uh, usable space in summer or something. Uh, Larry, do you want to comment on what we're going to be doing there from an IT point of view? Uh, certainly, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, so in, in terms of the Wi-Fi and, and the reach out there, uh, the, currently the request was to add a number of Ethernet type networking connections out there to support potentially a few things. Uh, one of which, uh, I mean, there is a project going through Opera as part of the Park and Rec to go ahead and supply public Wi Fi to various locations, the town beaches and, and potentially the town green. And especially with the new location of the gazebo being more towards the center of town green, it, it makes it a very good location for being able to establish some of the Wi-Fi and have the wires come. And the wires for that would be coming back into town hall. But anything that was done for public Wi-Fi would be very specifically segregated from anything that's going on from town hall. It would be public, it would be going through different channels, it would be going through different routers, and, and those things wouldn't mix at all. So uh, the infrastructure at town hall, the data at town hall, and things there would not be being put at risk by having the Wi-Fi out there. Uh, we'd have control over it uh, if there was a need to go ahead and if the desire was to shut it down at given times and only have it available at certain times, 
uh, we would be able to do that and, and intentionally. Um, so th those things could, could go ahead and be accomplished, but those circuits would be going back through town hall. Uh, mm -hmm. Additional things that might be out there. Uh, there's another project floating around in reference to upgrades to cameras and surveillance and various odd things in various locations in town. And one of the things that if you look at the surveillance system around town hall, well, we've got parking lots, we've got the exterior, most of the exterior of park and rec, but not all. But there are absolutely no cameras facing on town green. And I know the chief has been looking to be able to go ahead and establish that. And with the newer camera technology, uh, getting the internet connections available out in the gazebo would potentially go ahead and be able to make that happen and, and get that there as opposed to trying to do it from the perimeter. Uh, so that would be another benefit to that. So Carla, this 20,000 includes what Larry is talking about, not just a new electrical outlets out there. The, the 20 is for the, basically for the electrical work. Uh, some of the IT equipment may be paid from the IT capital budget or if there's, I don't think it's a significant expense. They mentioned ARPA money for the Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, just, I, I think for a moment, just to differentiate um, it's like the difference between having in your house outlets in the wall where you can plug stuff in and, and buying refrigerators and TVs and stuff to put them there. Uh, we got to make sure that the outlets are there to be able to plug in the, the Wi-Fi equipment or the cameras or that kind of stuff. You know, pulling the wires, you know, to the point, you know, somebody made earlier that once you start laying conduit in, you should lay as much conduit as you can. Similarly, with wiring, once you've got the conduit there and once you start pulling wire, you may as well pull as much wire as you can to make sure that things are available for future use. Because you don't want to be going back and trying to lay the wire or run the wire through the conduit after all this stuff is done. So if we can go ahead and get that stuff in place to, to meet those future requirements, and I believe that's within the $20,000 that we're talking about facilitate, doing the facilities, uh, that should be all covered. Does anybody else have any questions? Larry, would the Wi-Fi on the town green be public Wi-Fi that password protected and and only used if somebody wants to hold an event? I was under the impression the only reason we were putting Wi-Fi at Parks and Rec facilities was because one for cameras and two for credit card, that it wasn't going to be for public use. But is, are we thinking this is now going to be public use Wi-Fi on the town green? So the park and rec initiative was to establish some level of public available Wi-Fi in these various locations so that people, especially in areas like the town beaches where there, they might be dark areas for cell phone connections and things like that and people can't, the, the connectivity is, is not very good, that there would be local Wi-Fi available to go ahead and do that. Now, now, one of the things that with the technology that's available as far as that's concerned, uh, the goal would be and the target would be to set up Wi-Fi that would enable people to be able to deal with things like text messaging, uh, making sure their email applications and things work so that they've got some base level of connectivity. You know, it's like being in your home, uh, you have to have a certain amount of throughput available to do 4K video downstreaming. Uh, there's not a lot that's necessary to go ahead and allow text messaging to work. And it's anticipated that the equipment that we'd be putting in place would be throttling in individual connections so that it, it wouldn't be really viable for people to be, you know, watching movies or doing things like that. It would just be ensuring that they had connectivity for basic servicing services like text messaging and email when they're in those locations. But it would be, uh, as the proposal currently is, to, to make that available to the public as a public service. Thank you. Anybody else? Could I have a motion? A motion to approve uh, the 20,000 for the uh, electrical work at the gazebo. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Let's move on to the uh, Whisper Code fence stand. So, Back again. Well, Brad mentioned, I wasn't going to stain, we weren't going to stain it. Brad mentioned staining it. And I called the guy and I said, would this add life to the fence? And he said, yes, it'll probably add five to eight years anyway. Uh, and he said, you know, he, he was a low bidder. He said, yeah, I can do it for four grand. So I said, okay, let me see if I can get the money. And that's it. Very simple. The only only question I have is yeah. when we talked about this last time, the idea was it would be a whole lot easier to stain it before it goes up. And you have staining. He is going to stain it before it goes up. Oh, okay. Because it says is. after it's installed in the... Uh, Oh, I, yeah, my bad. Uh, my bad. No, he's going to stain it like in his garage, in his okay. workspace. Yes. I'm sorry. That's it. Sorry, I'm sorry. You're going to make a motion? I know. <laughs> sorry, he's going to do it for a little. I thought that was for Later in the materials, I thought that was actually pretty good. Yeah. I make the motion to approve $4,000 to stain the fence uh, at uh, sorry, Whisper, Whisper Cove. Cove. Second. Any further discussion? Discussion. Uh, I'd like to see the motion amended to where it says uh, standing in the new fence at Whisper Cove before it's installed. That's fine. Thank you. So yeah. then we know it, 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 it will be done. Yeah, we've had those issues with the school system where they put in the wording mm -hmm. here where they want to nope, pay and then stain. Yeah, yeah. Could you think yeah. about it? Would you mind amending that, uh, Brad? Well, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. And the second is fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I have passes. I was on the first one too. Okay. Sure. Maybe whisper about it. Uh, I, uh, I know you have. No, is there a chair available? <laughs> right. I thought I must not have sent it, and I. Um, I must not have sent it. Uh. So we received, and, and I know Larry Hayden is going nuts, we received uh, a steep grant, okay? And I, I don't know how many of you listened to the Board of Selectmen meeting last week, but so we have three, essentially three grants out there right now. We have two legislative earmarks and a steep grant. We have a $500,000 legislative earmark for the park behind the pickleball courts, a $770,000 legislative earmark for the sidewalks, and five hundred thousand dollar grant for the sidewalks. Uh, I emailed my contact. Did I already say this at a board finance meeting yet? I emailed my contact up at the state, and I because steep steep grants are reimbursable. Did I already talk about this or no? I don't think I did. Yeah, I can't remember. I did. Steep grants are reimbursable grants, so I have to come get the money. We expend it, and then we get reimbursed. So I asked the contact, I said, hey, are the legislative earmarks reimbursable or are they pre-funded like lots of grants at LOTCIP, which is how we did North Main Street. All of a sudden we got 1.3 million in our account before the work started. It's a beautiful thing. And that's how they do it. If they, they pre-fund certain things and they others are reimbursable. The answer was, Previously, legislative earmarks have been pre-funded, but we're not sure how we're going to treat these legislative earmarks. So I don't know whether those are going to have to be uh, reimbursed or not. And I may come to you, um, but I know the steep grant has to be reimbursed. Uh, so at your next meeting, I won't, not, not this meeting, but I just want to give Tom and the rest of the group and it's up. I'm probably going to come to you and do all three of them because there's no harm, no foul in getting Board of Finance town meeting approval to have all these approved and funded. And if they're pre-funded, we already have town meeting authorization, which we don't need. And if they're reimbursed, if they need to be reimbursed, it's already done. This work may not be done for another year. It's more laying the groundwork. So I'll probably just come and ask you for 
a lot of money, about $1.78 million, fund, to fund it, I'll go to town meeting with it, knowing that the money is coming back. Okay. Is that, go. I was going to put the steep grant on this agenda, but I'm thinking maybe I'll just do them all for it. Then five hundred thousand dollars we have to put up front for the issue down at the dock and dine. Yeah, uh, the newspaper one of them quoted as saying six hundred thousand. So um, yeah, yeah. So to to town uh, we have some in kind work that we'll be doing. So that can include engineering. So Gardner's Park. We got an estimate for about $30,000 worth of work. Larry can do it all with his crew. It's taking down trees. It's laying stone uh, for paths. Uh, so some of the work is in kind. Some of it may be expended from current budgets, like engineering budget, uh, that is in your regular operating budget. So it's 500000 and then... Additional in kind that uh, yeah okay. in kind or maybe expended from the operating budget. Yeah. But I saw that in the paper. I said, Chief yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Well, what happened is Jennifer did some. She changed. And we we changed the numbers at we're the good. last minute. And good. That's what it ended up. Thank being. you. Okay. Can we see that application? Yes. You, you know, know what? That? I have it in my folder, and I'll send it to everybody after this meeting. I'll go in my. Okay, we'll move on to the request for uh, capital non reoccurring funds for the digital assignment. Larry. 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 No, his voice sounds like he's in the room. There, there he is. is. There he is. Yeah. No, I'm not in the room. So look at him now. So um, I. I believe the memo regarding this was distributed beforehand. So uh, I'll go through the, the, the points of it relatively quickly and, and answer any questions you might have. You know, basically, you know, the history behind the two signs, they've been there for a while. Uh, originally, they were put in a couple years apart using, uh, even though they came from the faint, same manufacturer, the technologies behind them were slightly different. And, and ultimately, we were able to bring them uh, in the sink. H however, uh, the one that is out by uh, Mystic Market uh, is actually connected up over a wireless cellular modem type connection for doing the updates. Uh, and one of the things that triggered this request is that the technology that's there, which uh, when we first lit the sign up back in 2013 was CDMA technology, um, is now being sunset by Verizon and is not going to be used anymore. So although we were able to put that in place and it's been functioning now for, uh, you know, a bunch of years very successfully, uh, they're going to be discontinuing and we're going to have to swap that out one way or the other. Uh, second portion of this is that we take a look at the connectivity for the sign that's out by the, the, the Kate. That, that's actually hooked up to a wireless connection that I'm just going to say is hanging out of my window in the corner of town hall. Um, and depending upon what goes on, how much rain there is on my window and things like that, this, this condition gets marginal, the connection gets marginal and the sign becomes difficult to update. Uh, periodically it requires that I call over to the, the Kate, have them power cycle the sign. I have to do things here to get it recovered. Uh, and that, that can be a bit of a hassle. And, and it's something that, Maybe I can do and Brett can do, but if it turns into a situation where somebody, a couple other people involved, it, it, it's not that simple. And, and finally, uh, the third portion of this is that the programs that we use to, to put the messages on the sign, uh, they're currently on a single PC. Uh, the way they're set up, they can really only be on one PC. So we go ahead and put the messages together and we drive them out. And that PC at the moment happens to be my desktop because uh, I go ahead and go do those updates. And I can connect to it and do it remotely from other locations and that's fine. But it doesn't make it available to other organizations, for example, PD to be able to do something with it. So all these things coming together, I reached out to the sign company and said, what is, what is the best thing to do here? And their answer was, you know, bring it up to current cell technology, do a few upgrades, 
and fix it so we can update everything over the cellular wire. So this is what this proposal is here for. Uh, so uh, we, we start out by replacing the old CDMA modem with uh, current technology cellular. Uh, so it'll have a you know good lifespan. We can look forward to that working for a while in the future. Plus, um, it, it'll fix it so that uh, both of the signs are operated that way and they should be much more reliable to be updated. Uh, the next thing is that with this update is it allows the signs to be updated from a web application. So instead of having to update them from my desktop, we could log into a website, perform the updates that we need to do on the sign and have the signs automatically pick up the information from uh, the Stuart Sign Company and, and update those. Which means then if it's a situation where I'm not available, uh, somebody else who has the credentials in town hall can do it. Uh, if it's an emergency situation and the police need to have access to it, they could do it and they could override the sign without having to reach out to town hall to make that kind of thing happen. So um, that would be provide much more flexibility uh, to being able to update the sign. Another thing, uh, this does bring the sign up to the latest controller hardware. This is the technology that the sign company is currently using. The actual display and the boards being used in the sign are still the same technology that they're using. So everything at this point would be up to date and there'd be parts and things that would be fully available. Uh, note four here is, is this isn't an aftermarket thing that we are talking with the original company. It's stuff that would be fully supported. And if anything needed to be repaired, we could reach out to them and get that done. Um, the last time that I looked at potentially upgrading the sign, this kind of happened at the beginning, somewhere at the beginning of COVID where they were talking about spending COVID money uh, because somebody wanted to make the signs flashier, which uh, I think in some ways translates to uh, not fitting the current code and regulations that the town has in terms of what the signs can do. But the net result was if we had to replace these signs entirely, that we'd probably be looking at fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per sign with the installation and everything else involved. So the amount that we're talking here is relatively minor as far as that's concerned to go ahead and extend the life of the signs. Um, the other thing, the, the last one, which is you know, not that big of a deal, but I had to mention it anyways, is that when you take a look at the costs of the cellular technology and the uh, contracts with the wireless vendors that we, you know, we're currently paying $21 you know, for the sign to be able to update it, which isn't bad for a cellular plan, but um, with this as part of it, uh, includes the opportunity to go ahead and buy into it for a five-year plan that allows us only $13 per month. So it's a slight re reduction of the cost and it fixes the cost so that it's uh, stable over the course of the next five years. So that in a nutshell is what involves, what's involved uh -huh. here. Uh, are there any questions? Larry, uh, do you have any control over the sign at the high school? No, I do not. That's controlled by the high school people. Same thing with the sign at the middle school. Okay, so question to Carl is, personally, I think we all should have had a sign out on the West of Line by 166 when you get off. You know, we've got them coming into town in the other locations. In the event of an emergency, if they were all tied together where you could say your evacuation zones or your uh, your uh, shelter, shelters can be here or there and so on. If we're going to do this, why don't we do it right and do it across all of them and tie somehow tie them all together and add to one on the West Line? So in terms of the adding one, we can look into that uh, for maybe next year's budget okay. as a capital project. Larry, keep that in the back of your hat. Mm -hmm. uh, as when you say tying together, they so I mean, that we're not going to be flashing the same messages on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, basis. No, I'm thinking of I'm thinking outside the box as far as a hurricane, and yeah. we're going to give direction to the townspeople of Blizzard, yeah. where he could go in and take control of all of the boards, schools or not. And get the same message out if they had to. I think it, you know, it's the right thing to do. We ought to consider it. 
Yeah. I, you know, let them use it as they normally do yeah. every other time. In an emergency, I don't, I think if we said, you know, if we had a hurricane Ian coming our way, I don't think, I think the schools would come right along. I mean, I, I don't think there'd be any issue with that, but um, I, 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 I don't know what their controls are, Larry. Do you have any idea? Well, the last that I knew that the controls that they had were similar to the ones that we've got at Town Hall, where they're using the programming, they're directly connecting them via a Wi-Fi link from the building. Uh, they're not doing them via a, a modem connection. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things that it, it wouldn't be that much to uh, change that. Uh, but. You know, like there are a number of things that when you start taking a look at these, we, we, we see this in the IT world that there's a, a lot of expenses that you've got to be careful to compartmentalize because they get E-rate and we don't. We don't want to mix those types of things up. And, and there are, you, you want to be careful about combining them potentially. Um, the suggestion that they do that and uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know that it's something that it would fit in a project where we started to try to mix the monies associated with those things because of the way the two different budgets is managed. So the other thing we could say, we could, in theory, do an MOU. We can, we can come to some sort of agreement where if there's a state of emergency, we flash the same messages. Yeah. Would the chief have delegation on that? Would the chief have delegation to say, you know, to disclose because well, he, he has his emergency it, management over there. Yeah, there were, yeah, there was a state of emergency. Yeah. I mean, I think we could probably say, did you guys agree to flash the same messages in a state of emergency? Yeah. Well, right, right now, I think the chief is the one that calls whether there's going to be school on or off in the morning, like at 5 or 5.30. You know, with snow? Yeah. With snow. No, oh, that's not home. right. Yeah. It used to be. It's not that way. Now. That is not right. Uh, that's Jan Bruccio. She at, does that without three a.m. the chief. She talked to Larry Bonin. She, the chief had nothing to do with it. So anyway, yes. he has to be able to do that and tell somebody to change the sign at five in the morning saying no school or something like that. So who, who does uh, the chief of police contact at two o'clock in the morning because there's a disaster and we need to have their sign changed to match the sign for the town. So that would be part of the MOU that we need to have that knowledge for that Larry could have contact to. I, I, honestly, I, I, in a state of... So it would not just be in a I-95 is closed because of an accident. No, something in terms. It would be where the governor declares a state of emergency or the president. And then I have no doubt that we would be flashing the same messages. And I don't recall, but I'm guessing we have. Yeah. In the past. Uh, but I don't think, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That. I just wonder if it makes sense if you're going to be connecting all these things that they should be on. The well, I think Larry list. should share what he's doing with them. So maybe they want to upgrade their technology. Um, and certainly we can look into another sign on the other side. Yeah, because yeah. I think they're, they're very informal. I mean, they, obviously they are, but I mean, they're a lot of people like one or 66. But um, as you come out of 60, uh, off of 166 coming into town, or on Route One, whichever way you want to do it. I mean, so if you had access to the high school, then we'd all have, you know, on off hours for the school, you could do the same message for whatever it is. You know, during the day, the school can do their messages. They do it. They want to advertise their student of the month twenty four hours. Yeah, that's fine. And that's fair. You know, but I'm. Just, I just think they all should be tied together. Personally, that's my opinion. One way or the other, however who, you want to. Who can make the motion? Whoever wishes. Will we make a motion on this or what? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ready? In the first paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to make a motion to uh, appropriate from the capital non recurring fund $5,106.38 to upgrade the town's two digital signs, town green and gateway east by Mystic Market. Is there a second? Second. Are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you, folks. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Select these uh, You know, I.
Oh, oh, yeah. the school contract was verified to the uh, oh yeah the teachers yeah the teachers are it's all done about three for, about, on average about three percent a year I think. Uh, a little bit more yeah a little more about three point six I know over how long period three years for you Any other liaison reports? Hearing none. Do we have any comments from board members? Any public comments? No public comments. Any, any public? No. no comments from the chair. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is a tomorrow.